you just watched the show? Uh, I've read a little bit of the first book. Who's your favorite character? Right now? Boromir. Boromir? Mm hmm You mean Ned? Mm hmm You're gonna be... <laughs> you're gonna be sad. We're actually on the <laughs> air, Kev. <laughs> I already know what's happening. What's up? Bye, Kev. Anyway, let's talk about this game. Yeah, Kev, ste Kev stepped out... Kev stepped out on the set to tell me I've been telling my story wrong. Okay, so why don't you tell us the story, because I haven't heard this before. All right, so here's the story. And Kev's standing on the side of the set here, so he can correct me if I get it wrong. So I've been saying that it was Bly versus White Rob, but that's incorrect. It was actually Ukraine Star versus Freyer, uh, the, uh, that was, which I thought Freyer was Russian. He was also Ukrainian. Cool. He's Ukrainian. No, that, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. Go on with your story, Ben. Go away. You're losing momentum, All right, I got to tell you guys the story about the funny build. So it's a Ukraine star versus Freya. The map is Cloud Kingdom, where uh, the metagame right now is get an early expansion for Protoss. Zerg players want to take a fast three base and then play into the middle late game. Um, but Ukraine star turned that whole theory upside down when he went 14 pool, 16 gas. Oh, wow. Mined 100 gas, then stopped. Never took his natural, never took any additional bases whatsoever. Really? And just made about 48 speed links. As soon as speed finished, he attacked, and he crushed everything, and he won the game. Jeez, that sounds meta game. After broken. the game, Rotterdam, who was there, he was casting WCS Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, went up to Ukraine, so he's like, Ukraine, that seems like such a silly build. And he's like, no, it's good build. Only way to counter this build is with double wall, double gateway, double forge, double pylon, double cannon, double zealot. And if you don't have those things, you die. Dang. I feel like that was not as good as the last time I told this story. No, it's just as good. More of the story, guys. Never stop innovating. Yeah. That's what we do here at the North American Star League. That is what we, we do at the North American Star League. We, we are always looking to to be as as good as possible. Better. Send us your be feedback, better. in fact. Twitter.com slash Gretorp. Twitter.com slash MrBitterTV. And Twitter.com slash LiquidRat. That being said, Minigun is going for the very standard fast expansion, going for the gateway slightly before the cannon. This would be a really good time for the Ukraine star build. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with that. That's where you go, 14 pool, 16 gas. Oh. Gas, good speed. How do you defend that? The only way to defend it is if you have a double wall. Double gateway, double forge, double cannon, and double zealot. Double zealot, too? Yeah. Oh, wow. To plug the choke. Okay. Wow, that's really interesting. And with this building placement, I think that cannon or the pylon actually complicates it. You couldn't do double, yeah. double, double. Now, so how many how many zerglings awesome. would you get in that situation? About forty-eight speed links. Forty-eight. Interesting. Very interesting. That's a good build. Uh, can you do that after getting a natural in a third base? No. No. Only if you go one base. Okay. Thank you very much. Minigun is going to scout the third base of Vibe. Now, Vibe has got some fantastic uh, ZDP. Of course, he doesn't do silly builds like the one we were taught, we were joking about because uh, he plays some of the best standard ZVP in the book, uh, and he often plays these Roach-centric styles where he just uh, capitalizes on his excellent mechanics. Vibe is a very <laughs> fast player. We can see him right now cruising at about 290 APM, peaking up even higher than that, over 400 for a second. Uh, Minigun... Also pretty quick, but not nearly as quick as Vibe. One thing I love about Vibe style is, again, it is theoretically correct, but it is like the Stefano style. Um, and I love seeing that in, in, in works because it's those little things that you have. The Overlord, excuse me, the Overlord placement, the just watching the, the Forge, seeing when that goes up, having all the right indicators uh, available to you so you can actually make the right decision. So when do I actually get my gas? Well, that's dependent on if my opponent gets the plus one and or double gas. There's a lot of different indicators, actually. How much chrono boost is being saved up? Where is the minerals and gas going to? That's the main thing. So uh, Vive is just on point with everything, and that's what I, I just absolutely love about him. It's not tricky play. It's not um, you know a one-trick pony. It's overall standard. I'm going to play better than you. Speaking of tricky play, Minigun looks like he might be up to some shenanigans. Dropping four gateways, spinning that plus one. Probably going to see some sort of pressure from him. And there's that pylon going down at the top half of the map. Now it's so crucial. The Vibe spots this, and he has spotted this. His reaction, oh, he's just now starting the Roach one. That might be too late, Andre. I think so. Uh, and just as I say all those nice things about Vibe, he goes and kicks me in the butt. A lot of Zerglings are being not made right now. No, in fact, he's making drones. Yeah. 
That's crazy. And with this next big zealot warp in, it'll be a zealot warp in, right? I would think so. I would hope so. But it could be a stalker warp in, but we'll see. Ooh, there's a spine crawler building. Where's your warp in minigun? He's taking his time with it. Also throwing down a robo behind this. Oh my god, if he knew what we knew. Now there's the here come the zealots. Uh, spine crawler is actually going to finish, and that's going to give him a lot of uh, strength that he didn't have previously. These zealots are going to make short work of the uh, zerglings. Uh, but the spine, it does such great damage. Queen does not have energy for transfusion, unfortunately. And my goodness. Looks like roaches are going to be late to the party. Drones need to be evacuated. He's actually chasing Just down. Kill the hatch, the Minigun. Stalker. What are you doing? Oh, man. Minigun is misplaying this so bad. Roaches pop out. He could have killed that hatchery. Yes, he could have. And now, now he's just going to kite with the roaches. The roaches being out, they just deliver too much damage. And look at this vibe. Being able to keep his queen dead. <laughs> <laughs> queen micros as well as she can, but she hit the edge of the creep. And then she was like, well, there's no coming back from this. In this trip. I do want to mention really quick that Vibe wasn't prepared for this because he didn't actually make a ton of overlords. A lot of times when you're actually doing this, you make like four, five, six overlords just to have all that extra supply and then you just throw down as many units as possible. Uh, he, he didn't do that, meaning he didn't expect something like this. Oh man, Vibe has been microing his heart out here and his, uh, his minerals have peaked as a result of that, but he has managed to clean all of this up with frankly minimal losses. Ask me how many workers Minigun killed. How many workers did Minigun kill? Just one worker. On one there. one worker? Is that right? One worker and a uh, spine crawler. That doesn't... So kind of two workers, but... Let's look at the units lost tab. It looks like Minigun has lost more. So income tab is showing actually Minigun behind in observers. Er, observer. In harvesters. Um, he's now behind in expansions. And he hasn't done anything with his initial pressure. So he's, not, he's behind in tech as well because of that. He's even in observers though. He hasn't built one yet. That's true. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> He's gonna be going for some immortal play. He's getting that warp prism. So minigun saying, "All right, let's do this." Dropping four cannons at his at the front of his natural. And he's gonna be all in with this. So minigun, all or nothing at this point. Vibe right now making a lot of roaches. Now roaches can be the answer to this, but you need good engagements. So you've got to engage in an Correct. open space where you can surround. And if uh, if mini does this correctly. I think he could. Um, I think he could make something happen. Yeah, here. I think you you hit it on the nail. The engagement is the number one thing to how to to <laughs> to kill some sort of push like this. The amount of sentries that are out, there's a lot of capabilities though for minigun. Ooh, oh my gosh! So many sentries. Lings are coming as well, and they're on the creep. And no That's two, nice. Two Burn some force fields. Out. Get as many units as possible so you have that surround, but there is another wave of units. Warp prism now is this actually is the over. scary part, because when the warp ins start, things spiral out of control. Yes. There's another big round of stalkers. And Vibe, if he's going to fight this, he's, he's going to have to do it relatively soon. Oh, oh wow. really oh. good force fields. And that is, uh, those are the kind of trades that Minigun wants to make. Yes. Continuously. And now he's just going to start to uh, slowly creep up on that hatchery. As soon as he's in range of the hatchery, then he's in a grand uh, position. Honestly, I think at this point, Vibe should just be yeah. like, to hell with it. Let's go counterattack. Th that's that's exactly right. I don't think he, he could defend his third base. No matter what, no matter how many units you have in this position, your hatchery is actually blocking you, so you can't do anything about this. Abort mission, Vibe. There's not going to be a defense mounted here. It's too narrow. There's too much force field. The sentries are starting to run low on energy, oh, oh. though. With the hatch down, he will get an engagement, and it's not a wow. bad one. The force fields were whiffed, and Minigun, who was doing it oh so well, Vibe was just waiting for his opportunity. And with the hatch no longer blocking his attack path, he gets that opportunity and more. Excellent engagement there from Vibe. Needs to deal with the Immortals, and if he does that, uh, he'll have ended this push. Remember, Vibe, uh, or Minigun, walled himself in, so he can't actually add any more Immortals to this. Yep, but he has the Warp Prism to help with, uh, you know, additional warp ins. But still, I mean, that was a great hold. Vibe is actually mining off of his fourth base. Are you kidding me? He's playing this so, so well, but it might not be enough. There's a lot of Stalkers out here. They don't have blinks, so Zerklings are going to be very strong against them. But Vibe doesn't really have a lot of units on the map. Yeah, there is no blink, and that is kind of the critical thing. I feel like Vibe will eventually just be able to run over this. He's got 20 lings in production. Even if he oh loses my. this hatch, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Drone's going to come off the line as well. 
And uh, one final fight. These stalkers are going to be microed as well as they can, but there's just Beautiful. no hope. Vibe is playing this immaculate. Oh, Incredible my God. Incredible defense. I mean, that is so hard. I can't tell you how many games I have lost from that position. And uh, Vibe shows us that it is, in fact, very, very defensible. There is a new Immortal out. There are a couple sentries out. Not in a good place to attack up a ramp, but once he verifies that there is no third over here, Vibe's going to know for sure that he is super far ahead. He's going to macro and just play it out standard. Yeah, uh, Warp is going to try to warp in some zealots on that uh, that base over on the left side of the or th I guess we'll say the center part of the map. But more fights happening down around 6 o'clock, and Vibe has just got an overwhelming number of units. That zealot warp in did go down. Going to, you know, kill some roaches, maybe even kill a couple of drones. But it will be dealt with. Yep. I'm just on top of everything. Uh, Minigun trying to do as much as possible, but let's be honest, the, the fact that he lost that uh, puts him so, 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 so far behind because a lot of times Protoss get this really nice big push off of three base. Well, Minigun doesn't really have that much more time for his main. It's going to dry out pretty soon. And that being said, I mean, he, he has like one or two less minutes to actually deal with. Now Roach is coming oh. in here. Oh, he let so many in, and the sentries are going to be targeted down now. Beautifully played, and the third base is going to be denied. Oh, it doesn't get canceled. It was uh, just outright killed, so there's this, uh, there's no refund on that purchase. As uh, Minigun is again pounded back, forced back to his natural. Ling's going to try and come in from behind. More good force fields, but oh. there just aren't enough of them. And every unit is going to fall. And Root Vibe, best player in North America, still undefeated. Knocks off Minigun, qualifies himself for the voting holder of Ye Gauntlet. Ye Gauntlet. El Gauntlet. El Gauntalante. Yeah. Uh, well played. Really, really well played. Takes two wins to qualify for the fan voting. Vibe beat Cats. Vibe beat Minigun. That is two wins. Yes. That means he is in there. So Cats got three wins. Um, TT1 got TT1 four, got four wins. Holy moly. And that's, those are the only people who have qualified today. Cats, TT1, and Vibe will yes. be available in your fan picks at the end of... Oh, wait. And QXC got one. I'm sorry. Zero. He didn't he win. He got one game, though. He got one game. Yeah, he didn't oh, get, you're he right. didn't get he qualification. Did he did beat Shad. So I think we Forgive me. No, there are our <laughs> results of the day. QXC wins 75 bucks, $150 for Vibe and Cats. The big winner of the day, TT1, took four games and looked pretty poised to take a fifth one until Cats made spine crawlers in this natural. <laughs> and just to let you guys know, the players are picked based on, uh, you know, how fast or how long these players have been waiting. I know uh, when, when we got into the channel, all the players that we actually saw we're already in the channel, yep. and we actually showed up a lot earlier. So make sure for these upcoming coths, you actually get into the channels beforehand. Be here early. Be here early. We only play nine games a night. Yeah. And if you're the 10th player, then, well, that sucks for you. Yeah, TT1, I mean, he gets a free $300 for today. Well, not free. Well, he earned he, it. He earned it. Yep. But still, I mean, that's 300 more dollars than, uh, than people normally get in a day. <laughs> Okay. What are you Take even talking about? I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Guys, know. stick around. We're going to close out the show after this short break. Thanks for watching. Final thoughts in a moment.